Aloha, namaskar, and hello. This is Anu Hittal. This is five minutes at five. So I am reporting to you from Marrakesh, Morocco. This is COP22 or COP22. This is the meeting of the parties to the Convention on Climate Change. So this is a global level meeting where countries come to meet about climate change issues. Surrounding those countries, there are also a number of other groups and organizations and research institutions. I am here as part of a research institution observer delegation with three students from Washington University in St. Louis. We look at how the process unfolds and try and study and analyze those processes, take it back to the classroom and back to our community back in St. Louis. So the first thing that's happened that's been on everybody's minds here after uh, the negotiations started a week ago was of course the US elections and the outcome. Now, President-elect Donald Trump has of course said that he will be pulling out of climate change negotiations and that's the big what if in everybody's minds here. So can we US proof these negotiations? In other words, if the US drops out, can, these, uh, can the climate change work still carry on? Um, you, the US of course is the second largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions and after the, uh, it is after China and the EU and India are the other two big ones. So of the four biggies, if one biggie moves out, what happens? That's the big question. And can the US move out? So that's something that everyone has been talking about. The answer to that is that the US can decide to pull out of the UN Framework Convention, which is the overarching convention, and that could be in about as little as a year. For the Paris Agreement, it will take at least four years for the U.S. to pull out. Of course, the U.S. could decide not to pull out at all and do nothing, which is perhaps uh, the way it might go. However, the U.S.'s partners, such as the EU and China, have started putting a little pressure on it, and it's very interesting to be at the receiving end of threats of trade sanctions. So the EU has is talking about perhaps trade sanctions, um, on the US and China has talked about uh, really warning uh, the US to not pull out and I'm not sure what that means yet the warning but anyway so that's that's really what's going on it's quite exciting um, it hasn't really reached the negotiation level yet uh, but it is something that people are talking about all around the negotiations and we'll report more on that as the week progresses and we have a better idea of, of where this is going with the negotiations themselves for the negotiations, they're trying to figure out how will countries actually um, evolve to, to a point where they will be reporting, monitoring each other's reportings on what they're emitting and how much they've cut back. So this is something that's called Monitoring, Reporting and Verification, one of those acronyms MRV, and it will be something that is, that is very, um, actually very contentious, very debatable uh, because different countries have different ideas of how this should work out. So the second week really is, the first week is the worker bees, and the second week is ministerial level uh, people, and Secretary of State may also show up here. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, we don't know how, what, how this will all change with the coming administration, but for now, this is, this is what's happening. This is business as usual, sort of, um, and we'll see how this all unfolds. So this is Anu Hittel and I am here five minutes at five reporting to you. I will come back to you again tomorrow and until then stay tuned. I'm 